Today, uh, again, it's how, how to outlast tough times. How to outlast tough times. That's probably one of the biggest questions I get as a pastor. Everybody's going through something. How many of you know that? Everybody's going through something right now. If you're not, you will be. And if you've come out of one, you're getting ready to probably go into another one. Uh, but everybody is going through something in their life. You know, I thought about this week also. Um, Haywood kind of spoke about it this morning. This week alone, we buried a, a 12-year-old, uh, K.J. Richardson, and a 13-year-old passed away yesterday morning, about two-something. He was an eighth grader at Camelsville High School, played football, one of our students here, Cameron Smith. And uh, so it's going to be another, another tough week, another tough week. So I want you all to listen to me very carefully before I start preaching. That person sitting beside you, don't take advantage of them. If they're your wife, you better love them. If they're your husband, I don't care how bad he gets on your nerves, under your skin, if you want to smack that head and pull them ears, you pull them in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. People are important. People are important. That child, Johnny, that child that you're holding right now is God's baby. Don't ever forget that you are the daddy of that child. And that child is dependent upon his daddy to be keep it in church and read it the Bible and teach it godly Godly manners and to raise her upright in the house of the Lord. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. That's what we do here at Elkhorn. So, real quick, I want to keep love in the atmosphere because that's what God is. God is love. Turn to your neighbor and say, I love you. Turn to somebody. Here's what's going to wig y'all out. Y'all ready? Somebody don't even know and say, I love you. It's weird. It's weird. It's really weird. I love you. You know? And people's like, I don't, I'm not telling them I love them. That's why the world's like it is. We're not showing love. And so uh, we got we to do that. But how many of you know there's going to be some tough times? There's going to be tough times. We all have good, hard, bad days. Everyone here at one time or another has probably thought about giving up. Huh? Thought about just, I mean, just giving up. It's not worth it to get on my nerves under my skin. Don't like it no more. Don't like him. Don't like myself. Can't even look yourself in the mirror without going boo. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's horrible. But we've all thought about it. That's why I love the Bible. I'm going to be honest with you. That's why I love the Word of God. Because this Bible has people just like me, as honorary as me, bad as me, done things that I've done and done worse. Yeah. But I love the Bible because you know what the Bible does? The Bible is a reminder to me how far that God has brought me. Now, how good He's been to me. Where he's brought me out of the valley of depression and anxiety and worry and stress. And when people rose up against me, my God never let go of me. My God, as this Bible is a reminder of, to me of who I am in Christ and where I can go. You know, these people in the Bible, they got angry many times. They, uh, they, got, they gossiped <laughs> many times. They, they got drunk many times. I'm not telling you all this is right, it's wrong. But I'm telling you, they're just like me and you. Don't ever think that you have arrived to perfection. Because if you have, you've got fl uh, feet of clay, and God will quickly knock them out from underneath you. So don't forget where God has brought you from. Amen? Amen. King David gives us some advice on what to do during these tough times. Times that you don't think you can get through it no longer. How do you outlast tough times? Now, before we get started, I want you guys to I want you to talk back to me. I want you to talk to your neighbor. Keep the, the Spirit of God in this house. Won't you turn to your neighbor and say, I'm coming out. Come on now. Now won't you tell me this, I am an overcomer. Yeah, now tell me this, let's go deep. Y'all ready? You've met, the devil's messed with the wrong person. Come on, say it again. The devil's messed with the wrong person. Come on back. What y'all doing back there? Let's talk this morning, amen? Yeah, I'll come back here where you at, Hallelujah. Yeah, the devil's done mess with the wrong person. But I'm going to outlast this tough season. I'm an overcomer. God's in me. He's with me. I've got deep roots in Jesus Christ. And you do too. So watch this. Elkhorn, or if you're a guest here today, watch this. Y'all ready? We win. Amen. Isn't that good stuff? We're going to win this battle. I'm so excited this morning to preach this word. I'm, I'm just tore up from the floor up, as Brother Her Hergen used to say. Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 6 is what I'm going to be reading. Got one point today, I think. We'll find out real quick. The book of Psalms, chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. If you're there, say amen. 
Hallelujah. It says in verse 1, Psalms chapter 1, Blessed, everybody say blessed. Yeah, watch what he says. Is the man that walketh not, not, walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. In other words, God says, if you want to be blessed, get away from the gospel people. Oops. Get away from the people who's always stirring up trouble. Get away from the family member who's always adding fuel to the fire. You say, Brian, that's mean. Take it up with God. That's what God said. He said, if you want to be blessed, he says, you get away from the gospel people. You get away from the people who's always starting to cause problems in the church. Watch this. You ain't going to hang around at Elkhorn too long because we don't believe in that stuff. We nip it in the bud while it's fresh and get it out of the church while it's fresh. We don't, we don't sit back and let it keep firing and brewing up. So listen, if you're a troublemaker, you ain't going to fit in well here. Oops. Let me go back. And he also said, he said, don't, don't stand in the way of sinners. He says, in other words, he said, don't you listen to them. Don't you stand with them. And watch what else he says. Don't you sit at the seat of the scornful. In other words, if you're not careful, they'll drag you in. Next thing you know, you were standing. Next thing you know, you'll be around their table, sitting at their table, and doing the same thing that they're doing. They're adding gossip and nasty stuff that does not matter. Nobody, watch this, nobody will go to heaven if somebody gossiping all the time. That's why nobody wants nothing to do with the church. Because they say, well, what's the church? The church is no different from the world. So why would I want to come into a church where there's more problems and more gossip going on than there is in the world? See, what the world needs is a church that's full of the Holy Ghost. The church that's going to stand up and say, you know what? That is wrong and that is right, and I'm going to stand up for what's right. That's what the world needs to see in a church. Y'all may not like it, but it's good preaching anyhow. With the, word, the church needs to hear a word straight from heaven again. The pastors need to quit backing down and being sissies and saying, you know what, it's going to make somebody mad. Well, I got news for you. My God is a good God. He's a just God, and he stands for righteousness. Somebody give him a praise in this house. God to come through when nobody else will. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost already. Thank you, Lord. We need, we need holiness back in the pulpits. We need to fear God once again as a nation. We need to stand up for what God says is right. And we know that in our minds, and we got the godly concepts, and we got religion down good. But God's not worried about religion. He's not worried about you even being happy. He's worried about you being holy. And if we'll be holy, people will see that and it'll draw them. I don't want people to look at Elkhorn not for the band or not for the preacher. Or not for the invitation, but for the presence, hallelujah, of Jesus Christ. That God, people will be driving and God will draw them, Jared. That they walked in and say, man, I just felt the unction. I love that old, good old King James word, unction. I felt the drawing, the wooing of the Holy Ghost. That he'll come in and sit with me. So listen to this. I ain't even got to verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the, of the Lord, the word, the, the word of God. And in his law doeth he what? meditate day and night verse 3 and he should be like a what a tree planted by the rivers of water i feel the lord that bringeth forth his fruit in his season god's timing is everything god's timing is not your timing god's timing is not my timing but god's timing is the right timing god knows when you can handle it and god knows when you can't handle it God knows when you need a breakthrough. I feel the Lord. And God knows when you can't handle that breakthrough at that time. It's about God's timing. I know everybody's got, got a time schedule. I know everybody's got to be at work early in the morning. I know that people's got to be at school. I understand that. But I'm telling you, what the church needs is to be still and know that he is God. Just chill out. It's about God's timing. Don't rush your miracle. I feel that in the Lord. It's not in my notes. but Don't rush your miracle. Don't rush your miracle. He said this right here. Be like a tree and it's bring forth its fruit in its season. His or her leaves will, shall also not wither. And whatsoever, I did not write this. And if you've got a problem with it, go to the Bible, talk to Jesus, and y'all can settle it. But here's what he said. Whatsoever he or she doeth shall. God says, if you meditate on me, 
And if you're like a tree planted by the rivers of water, deep root, he said these words, he says, whatever you do, it shall prosper. You know why? Because you will not be shaken. Sickness will not shake you. Financial problems will not shake you. Verse 4, the ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. We talked about this last week. The reason why the, the ungodly can't stand before God, because God says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is God. So watch this. If you're lost in here today, can I give you some best advice I can give you? Please get saved. Go ahead and confess him while you're alive. Go ahead and praise him while you've got breath here. Because one day, whether you like it or not, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is God. And I don't want these words. This is, the, this is the words of all the Bible I do not like. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. And churches are in denial. Can I just preach something really quick? There is a hell. There is a devil. There is a consequence to not knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you do not know God, when you take your last breath, you will exit, you will enter into condemnation. Hell. And God don't want that. God said he died. Whosoever believeth in the Lord shall not die. You've got to believe in him. Watch this. He says you can't stand in judgment or you can't stand in the congregation. You know why? Because when the, when the rhema word from heaven is going forward, if you're a sinner and you've got sin in your life, all of a sudden you feel convictions on you. And all of a sudden you can't sit very comfortably in a Holy Ghost Spirit service. You know why? Because that spirit starts welling up in you. Next thing you know, you say, man, I can't, the heat's on. And you start backing out and a lot of people will walk out. I've seen it done before. I've seen it done before. And oh, by the way, if you reject God and it's the last time, it's called blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. This is, this is a biblical word, too, and I'll preach this one time. You've got 24 hours, and if you don't make it right in 24 hours, you're a dead man. Whoops. Now I got y'all's attention, didn't I? It's in the Word of God. I'll preach it one time. Hallelujah. For the Lord knoweth, verse 6, the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? Watch this. Sin has its final day. When I read that, it just spoke up in my spirit. It said, Brian, you know what? People who think they're getting away with stuff, they're not getting away with anything. They're not getting away with anything. Sin has its final death day. Sin, will, sin one day will bow down before God and God will say, I told you so. Hallelujah. I told you so. So how do you outlast tough times? Really quick, last week I told you, meditate day and what? Night. In the Hebrew, that means self-talk. Everybody say self-talk. And so in other words, if you're having some tough times and the devil is after you, you have to tell yourself what the Word of God says about you. Not what your best friend says about you, but what the Word of God says about you. What's the Word of God say about you right now? Huh? Greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. What else? What does God say about you this morning? See, if you're like this, I promise you, if I was the devil, you'd be my first target. Because Christians don't realize who they are and whose they are. When you realize who you are in Jesus and whom you belong to, I'm telling you, that'll make the devil tuck his tail and go straight back to hell. Somebody help me praise him in here. When you know who you are and whose you are, it makes all the difference in the world. When the old devil comes at me and says, Brian, you're nothing. You're nothing. Your best days was a long time ago. Your anointing was a long time ago. You're nothing. You can't do this. I'll just look that joker in his eyes and say, that ain't what God said. That's not what God said about me. That's not what God said about you. That's not what God said about your marriage, man of God. That's not what God said. See, Christians have got to learn to stand up until the devil shuts up. We cannot let the devil outshout us no more. Amen? I hope y'all believe this word. Make, listen to me. I believe there's a lot of emotional stuff that goes on in churches. We clap and we hoorah, but Monday comes and we don't know what to do. So my job is to equip you now that when Monday comes and hell is in the hallway and your boss is down your throat and your marriage is on rocks, that I can sit there and you can sit there and go, you know what? What God puts together, no man can separate. 
that God said, I'll never forsake you. I'm with you. No matter what you say about me, hallelujah, I am God's child. I'm a child of the one true king. Do y'all believe this? Because watch this. It is so easy to be a con Christian. It is so easy to walk into church and say, man, I'm here. But you walk out the same way you walked in. It is so easy a lot of times to give in to the devil and his schemes and his lies. He's a liar. So you have to self-talk yourself. Remind yourself. When the devil starts talking, watch this, I start talking. When the devil starts telling me I'm nothing, I rise up and say I'm something. And y'all, get, you got to get this, guys. Because I'm telling you, listen, I get a lot of phone calls throughout the week. And every time what I do to every one of you, I always point you back to the Bible. Back to the Word of God. Y'all ready for this? Number, point number two. Point number one was meditate day and night. You got to what? Self-talk. You got to self-talk. I don't know why the Lord just spoke this into my heart. But I remember Courtney and Mitchell. That Sunday morning that we was out here in the doctor's Y'all went through all that stuff, and everybody else saying they ain't going to have no babies, blah, blah, blah. And then y'all was in the process of adopting that morning. The Spirit of God dropped in this house big time thick. And I remember the Lord spoke into my spirit and said, you tell Courtney her call is coming. And that day at 2 o'clock, if I'm not mistaken, her phone rang, and it was them to go get their baby. And today that baby's here at church. Don't tell me that God don't love you. Don't tell me. That God don't have big plans for you. Don't tell me that if God be for you, who can be against you? I'm telling you, my God, the latter rain is going to be better than the former rain. The outpouring of God is going to be stronger than ever before. But you got to want it. How many of y'all want an outpouring of the Holy Ghost? How many of y'all want to be touched by God like never before? Hey, I feel the Lord. Ah, give me more. That's what I want. I want more of God. I'm telling you, there's something happening. And people will call you crazy. They'll look at you and say, Brian, you're crazy. I'm the point I like craziness. I'm the point I, they call this being radical. I call it being normal. You, my mom, I look, never mind. The Lord will shut you up too, hallelujah. He will, won't he, Tommy? You're getting ready to say something, and the Lord goes, shut up. You say he don't talk like that. Read Matthew chapter 5. Yes, he do. That's Kentucky language. Hallelujah. Point number two, be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Boy, this is a deep word. I want to give it to you today real quick. Be like a tree planted. Everybody say planted by the rivers of water. Watch this. Notice trees go through all kinds of seasons. They, they, go, through, they go through spring and summer, fall and winter. Spring and summer is when the, the leaves are big and they're beautiful and the trees look strong and mighty. They have leaves and it's all big and beautiful. But when winter comes, the leaves go. And sometimes branches come off missing. They miss, they fall off the tree. But I have some good news for you. Winter time doesn't kill the tree. Don't want you to listen to me. Winter doesn't kill the tree. Coldness don't kill the tree. Winter time kills the bugs that want to kill the tree. Listen to me. The bugs are the tree's enemy. God says you're like a tree, hallelujah, that's planted by the rivers of water. And the enemy, a lot of times, comes to you and he tries to steal, kill, and destroy. He tries to kill the tree during the cold times of your life. He tries to come at you when, when you're down to nothing and you don't feel like nothing's going on in your life. The enemy will come at you and try to take away your life. He steal, kills, and destroy. But winter kills the bugs, but it don't kill the tree. Somebody needs that word today. Listen to me. Cold weather preserves the tree. Cold weather preserves the tree. So I want you to listen to him. Everybody say, I got you, preacher. Very important you get this word today. So the revelation you need to get this morning is when you're going through some hard times. How many of y'all are going through some hard times, some cold times? Ten. rest of you, there's an altar call here in just a moment. You can come up here with me. What's wrong with the church? We're in denial. We come to church, and we know God. We know the Word's going forward. We feel the Holy Spirit. And then all of a sudden, we say, who's going through a tough time, a hard time, a cold season? Preacher, that's me, but don't look at me. Preacher, that's me, but 
I don't nobody going through I know I'm going through a hard time. I got over that a long time ago. I really did because here's what I know. The Bible says where two or three come together touching and agreeing, I will be in the midst. The Bible says that one can put a thousand to flight and two can put ten thousand to flight. I'm better with you than I am without you. Somebody help me praise God because we're a good family and we can do much more together than we can apart. That's what I've learned in my life. Listen to me, you got to get this word. When you're going through some tough times, some cold, cold, cold seasons in your life, listen to me, God is preserving you for your next steps. God is preserving you for your next steps. How many of y'all have a freezer at home? I got one. You know what you do with the freezer, don't you? (laughs) I wrote this down. You place things in the freezer that you want, but you just don't want them right now. Listen to me, good word. You put them in the freezer, you want them, but not just right now. What you're really saying is that you're valuable to me. I want you. I desire you. But the timing is just not right. The timing is just not right. So listen to me. You're saying, I'm glad you put me in the freezer. Because this stops, listen to me, the aging process. I wrote this down. When when you get in a cold season of your life and you feel like you can't feel God no more. You feel that, man, your anointing has just left you. God has not opened the door for you. I don't know about you, but I go through some hard times in my life. It seems like I've been under the bus for over a month now. But guess what my wife told me the other day? Brian, keep rolling. Brian, keep rolling. And how many of you know you don't want to hear that sometimes? But it's true. Keep rolling, because if you stop, you'll get ran over. But as long as you keep rolling, stop, drop in, roll. If you're on fire, stop, drop in, roll. Because what I'm trying to tell you is that God sometimes will place you in a freezer. It's a spiritual freezer. You don't think it's good. You can't hear God like you once felt God and heard God. You feel that nobody loves you. You feel that you're away from everybody. But can I tell you the spiritual freezer is okay. The spiritual freezer is okay. Because see, when you're going through through a tough, ugly season, time of your life, it seems like nothing is going right for you. You're in the freezer. How many of y'all feel like you're in the freezer? Yeah. What God is saying is, I want you, and I'm going to use you, but not right now. Not right now, Scott. God, he loves you. He desires you. He wants a relationship with you. And the reason why sometimes we don't feel God, and we feel so disconnected from God, you can be sitting in church under a rhema word from God, and you can be looking straight at me, but it'd be going in this ear and out that ear, and you'll walk out the same way you walked in. Shame on you. Shame on you. That's why I tell people all the time, they come to me all the time, here's what they say. I, I, don't, uh, I don't even, I'm not faithful at my church, and my pastor gets on my nerves. He's not even a preacher. It's cold. It's like a frigid air, this, that, and the other, and blah, 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 and this, that, and the other. And here's my favorite word to him, y'all ready? Leave! Leave! Get out of that dungeon! Get out of there! You say, well, my grandma's buried in the back of the church. If your grandma could get up, she'd leave too! I'm telling you the truth. Because you've got to get where God's at. You've got to get where the fire of God is ringing and rolling in your heart. You've got to feel the presence of God down in your spirit once again. You've got to know when you left church that you've been in church. And I ain't compromised on that no more. Well, you're going to hurt people's feelings. Leave! I'm just telling you the truth. People say, I want the truth till they get the truth. And when they get the truth, they leave. Listen, I've been in ministry long enough to know If you've got a good relationship, working relationship with God, you won't be offended by his word. You may get your toes stepped on. But I'm at a church now. When I walk down the aisle, they are just putting their toes out like it. Go ahead, preacher, get there's five, and here's five more. They like it. They like it. Listen to me. Some of you are in a cold season in your life. You don't feel God like you once did. You know why? Number one, you may not... You may not have a good working relationship with him. Oh, you may know him, but you don't have a relationship. Satan knows him. Satan knows scripture. 
Satan shows up for church. Satan, Satan comes to vacation Bible school. Satan is everywhere too. But watch this. One thing he will not do is worship God. Let me go on. Some of y'all feel like you're in the freezer. Some of you don't feel God no more. Some of you can hear God, but you don't feel God no more. You feel like you're going through a tough, ugly, barren, fruitless season, and nothing seems to be going your way. But can I tell you something really good today? There's going to come a time when God's going to thaw you out. There comes a time in your life, in your ministry, in your walk with God. You've been in a cold season, a damp season. You don't feel God like you once did. And God's got you in a spiritual refrigerator. The bugs can't get to you there. Hallelujah. And when God's ready for you, he's the only one that can reach down and grab you and place you on the counter. God's going to thaw you out. But listen to me. Some of you right now, you're in that season. You, can, and you may not be cold, but you're thawing out. Or you feel a little something like you've never felt before. You feel the Holy Spirit just nudging at you. Now I hear people say this all the time. They say, Brian, all you talk about is the Holy Spirit. tell you something God said I planted you by the rivers of water the rivers in the Hebrew and in the Greek amazing thing water means represents Hebrew and Greek Holy Spirit God says the reason why you can walk and the reason why you you can be vital in your life with me the reason why you can do what you can do is because you're the tree hooked up to the right source and it keeps flowing through you at all times the Holy Spirit is in you. He's not around you. Watch this. Watch me very carefully. He's not around you. He's not sitting beside you. The Holy Spirit is in you. He's in me. Y'all believe that? How many of y'all believe that the, the Holy Spirit is in you? So it's not you. It's Him working through you. And the reason why people don't like talking about the Holy Spirit is because they think something's going to happen out of their control. It will. It will. If y'all have got church figured out, man, you're God. You're God. I'm talking about a church service that you may feel like you're in the freezer, but God got you out of the spiritual freezer and put you on the counter. And even though you see him walking by every once in a while and you feel him, there's a thawing out stage. And you know what happens after thawed out? You're going to be cooked out. Hallelujah. You're going to be put on the stove and cooked. And I pray that the Holy Ghost cooks you in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of y'all look at me like, oh, God, what's it feel like? What's he going to do? Is he going to hurt me? Is he going to hurt me? Is he going to hurt me? Why are people afraid? Why are you afraid of the Holy Spirit? He won't hurt you. He'll make you walk on water. Hallelujah. Even when you're in the lion's den, he'll super glue the lion's mouth shut. I'm talking about when people are at you, something will rise up in you called the Holy Spirit, and it don't matter if the whole world has come against you. If God's for you, he'll put a word in you, and he'll stand you up and make you look up and shout up and pray up until you're going up. Amen? That's my God. Hallelujah what God to do and see if listen to me the Holy Spirit is planted in me it's deep in me and you can't move Jesus that's why I tell people yes I believe in eternal security because watch this you're not moving if you if you lose it you've done a greater work of that than Jesus did on the cross I mean if your sin can nail him back to that cross your sin done a greater work than what grace did on that cross there's no way possible that sin can ever put my God back on that cross when he paid for it and he paid for it all and I am proof and you are proof that grace is alive and grace is real and grace will go on forevermore somebody praise him hallelujah see if you're planted by the right soil by the by the right river and in the right spirit, hallelujah, you can say, I shall not be moved. If I'm by the right, in the right soil, by the right river, with the right spirit, man, I'm telling you, that's a deep river. You see, I'm planted in Jesus, hallelujah. I'm planted in Jesus. This church 
is planted in Jesus. My babies, my children, they're not mine no more. They belong to God. They are planted in Jesus. Even where this church is planted in Jesus, my wife is planted in Jesus, the songs are planted in Jesus. Everything is planted in whom? Come on, I don't know if y'all, come on, guys. Please come on. And you say, Brian, I, I don't like talking in church. Boy, you do over ball games, though, don't you? And see, I just think the party's at church, not on the field. I think the party should be right here with the atmosphere of God going around. Here's what God dropped in my spirit this week, Brandon. You, you, you listen, listen, listen to this. You ready? Because Brandon will go home, and he'll go back downstairs in his basement, and he'll hit this sermon 59,000 times. He'll start preaching, and his mama says, Lord God, he's been listening to Brian again, you know? <laughs> Won't you? He loves the Lord. I wish my worship could be as free as his sometimes. Check this out. The Lord spoke into my heart. You know, Satan, you remember Satan in the book of Genesis and in the book of Job, Job chapter 1. It says that the enemy Satan was going to and fro, back and forth, doing whatever, going wherever he wanted to go. You know what the Lord spoke into my spirit while he was going to and fro, back and forth, wherever he wanted to do? He wasn't planted. He wasn't planted. See, when I am planted in God, I've got deep root in God. And no matter if the storms shall come and the winds shall blow and my foundation is shaken, I'm still formed and I'm still planted in Jesus Christ. Nothing, I shall not be moved. Come on, I shall not be moved. One more time, I shall not be moved. Why? Because I am planted in the Word of God. I shall not, I will not be moved because I'm in Jesus the world can come against me, but I'm planted in Jesus. Yeah, there ain't no party like the Holy Ghost party. I'm planted in the Word. I'm not going to move. I'm not going to be shaken. I realize death may be knocking at my door right now, but I will not be moved. I will not be shaken. No matter what happens to me, no matter what my circumstances are, I shall not be shaken. I shall not be moved. You say, Brian, watch out. Satan's coming. Bring it on. I ain't scared of no old stinking devil. I ain't going to let the devil out shout me no more. I've got something in me that's a whole lot bigger than a devil. The last time I read my Bible, hey, death, hell, and the grave has been defeated, and God is the winner. He's in me. He's in you. And he's my God. He's my God. So here's what you got to do. The reason why some of you, watch me. I'm going to teach you really quick. The reason why some of you are going to and fro, back and forth, is because you're not planted. You're not planted. I'm going to help you. Y'all ready? Here's the best counseling ever. Jesus. Here's the best counseling ever for y'all's marriage. Jesus. That's all you're going to get from this preacher. Well, I'm ready, I'm ready for some big theological, eschatological debates. Go to seminary. I've been there. It's boring. I graduated barely, but I got it. And my brother told me, he said, the thing about graduating seminary, he's a doctor, a radiation oncologist. He's a medical doctor, and I'm a doctor of theology. It's crazy. John says what works physically, and I tell you what works spiritually. But my brother calls me all the time and says, what do you think about this? Jesus. Jesus. Youth. Jesus. You say, Brian, that's so simple. Why don't we try it? The church problems. Y'all ready for this? People, flesh, get out of the way and let God take your seat. And I promise you, you'll have some church. You'll have some church. You just got to die to it. The reason why Satan was going back and forth, to and fro, and the reason why a lot of people, a lot of Christians are going to and fro, back and forth, this church, that church, this church, that church, that way, whatever, is because they're not planted. Oh, man, I done messed somebody up. I'm glad all y'all are here, but watch this. Are you planted? Planted. Planted. If you're planted, when the preacher preaches truth, you won't leave. How I many of y'all know this is yes, this is no, and this is I'm going. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so watch this. Y'all ready? I'm almost done. Praise team, you guys come. God spoke into my spirit, and I want you to write this down, because anytime God speaks into my heart and into my spirit, 
I'm going to give it to you. I don't take this lightly, but it's truth. It is important that you get planted deep in Jesus. Write that down. It is important that you get planted deep in Jesus. Deep in Jesus. That when the storms come, get a bad doctor's report, whatever it may be, you got to do two things. Y'all ready? Meditate day and night. Everybody say meditate day and night. Meditate means this in the Hebrew, self-talk. In other words, watch me. I'm going to teach you really, really quick. I'm going to try to anyway. I am a spirit. I have a soul, but I live in a body. Now listen to me. Very carefully, y'all get this. Dang, this is a good teaching. When you get a bad doctor's report, or if you get something in your marriage, or something going on, whatever it may be, I, relationship, whatever it may be, financial problems, whatever, you fill in the blank. Here's what's going to happen. The first place it's going to go is to your flesh. Your flesh. The second place it's going to go is to your soul. Now I'm going to say something, but this is true. The only thing that is saved on you is your spirit. Watch me. Deep, deep, deep word. Your spirit is saved. That's your God conscience. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Now, I just got to ask you, how many of y'all's minds are completely 100%? Everything's going good. You don't ever have a bad thought. It's saved. It's been redeemed, and everything's going good. That's why you're, listen to me, your soul is your mind, will, and your emotions. And no matter what you're going through, it goes to your flesh first and to your soul second. After your soul, you've got, you got to make a decision. It's going to get in your mind, your mind, will, and your emotions. And if you're not careful, once it gets in your mind, you're going to be like a basket case. Oh, God, a bad doctor's report. Oh, God, this, that, and the other. And you're going to be going crazy. You're going to be an emotional person if you don't watch out what your third step's going to be. Your third step is your spirit. Your flesh, your soul, and your spirit. The only thing that is saved on you right now and in you is your spirit. It's your God conscience, is your spirit. Is this making sense? Y'all hang with me five more minutes, I'm done. So when we get a bad doctor's report, relationship, financial report, bankruptcy, foreclosure, children gone wild, oh, hallelujah. All of a sudden it goes to the second step. It goes to your soul. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. At that point, you got to make a decision. Am I going to believe my flesh or am I going to believe my spirit? My spirit is the only one that will say, that is not what God says. My spirit will rise up in me and say, no, 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 no. That's not what God said. God says that if I, I am the bread and I've never seen the, the lost forsaken or a seed begging for bread. My spirit will override my flesh. But also, what here's dangerous already. Your flesh will override your spirit if you're not careful. That's why we got Prozac. That's why we got antidepressants. I, I guys, I'm shooting you straight. Can y'all handle truth out here? I'm shooting you straight. You say, well, Brian, should I get off my medication? Listen, I believe medication can be good for a season. A season. But I'm not sitting and telling you that you're going to be on Prozac all of your life. You're going to start meditating, self what? Talk. Self-talk. I'm coming out of this. God, I know my mind is a wreck right now, Lord. It's going to and fro, north, east, south, and west, God. But, Lord, I know you didn't make me like this. I know you put the blood of God on my head. And, Lord, if you're for me, who can be against me, God? And I, if, I, if I ain't coming out today, I'll come out tomorrow. If I'm not coming out tomorrow, I'll come out next week. But I'm coming out. I'm an overcomer. Hallelujah. How many of y'all believe y'all are an overcomer? How many of y'all believe y'all coming out? Y'all getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Come on, stand to your feet and praise God. Come on, don't stop. Praise Him. Come on, praise Him. He's got you. God's got you. God's got you. But you got to be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. Water represents the Holy Spirit. And being connected to the Holy Spirit, it'll flow in me. It'll flow in me. Some of y'all may be in the freezer right now. Watch me. You're okay. Just not now. 
God's got you in the spiritual freezer, man. You're sitting there going, God, I want to do this. I can do this. I know you can, but not right now. And then there's a second stage, thawing out. <laughs> you got to thaw out. During that stage, the real stuff's coming to the surface. You're thawing out. You're getting strong, putting seasoned, hallelujah. And then you're going to be cooked. And I'm talking about, Mark, when you start cooking, you're on fire, brother. So you may be in the freezer. You may be thawing out. And right now, you may be on fire. Everybody in here right now is somewhere. And today, I'm begging you to say, God, wherever you got me, I trust you. And I feel so cold right now, God. I don't feel you like I once felt you, Lord. But God, I know I'm going to be thawed out one day. Hallelujah. And I know when I, you thaw me out, you're going to put me on fire. How many of y'all want to be on fire for God? Youth, come on. We don't need just an ordinary little youth group. We need a Holy Ghost Spirit-filled youth group that loves God on the football field and at church. Because watch this. If you'll never love Him on the field, you'll never really truly love Him at church. You've got to be real. Planted by the streams of living water. Deep root. So if y'all would, I want you to pray with us. Altar's open. I don't know where your marriage is at. You may be in the freezer in your marriage right now. I pray for a hot, steaming, rocking marriage. Come on, oh glory. Tom loves that. Tom, 80 some, 81 years old. And he's still going, oh glory, I received that. Look at him. I love it. I don't know where you're at today. You may be in the freezer, and you feel like I'm so cold, Brian. I don't feel God like I once did. Watch this. Y'all ready? It's okay. Because you're going to thaw out one day. And when God's ready to use you, y'all ready? Whenever God's ready to use you, whenever God's ready to use you, whenever God's ready to use you, He'll get you out and start thawing you out.